Hey, it's chapter three of the seldom heard tale of Stinky Claws. After receiving the note from the witch, from Mrs. Witchgarten, uh, Carl changed and headed for the employee's parking lot, trying to think if there was any other reason he'd be called to Witchgarten's office other than his embarrassing affliction. After pressing the remove for uh, the remote for his car alarm, a uh, co-worker came up from behind him and whispered, "Watch out for the head elf. She's a sky. She's a sky for upstairs. She's a spy for upstairs." And with that guy with that the guy left Carl was a little startled by this new information so Karen the security elf was a spy Carl thought to himself she kept the line orderly and made sure there was no late arrivals the kid wanted to see Santa Claus he or she had to wait there like everybody else not run off to the Warner Brothers store while his mother held the spot now he knew knew how Mrs. Witch Gartner got wind of this problem but he couldn't think of any way to stop his gas or Karen from ratting him out that night, he watched TV and passed on his wife's Thanksgiving leftovers. He felt ashamed to tell her that he might be losing his job over his stomach disorder, but he had to say something before Monday, so he broke it to Peggy gently at first, then he got down to the dirty details. When he was done, Peggy said, I can tell you had a problem from your game costume, but I hoped it was on the way home from work. Then she broke some really bad news. Their son-in-law, Eric, was among the victims of the phone company's upcoming layoffs, and he was probably going to be out of work come mid-February. That meant that their grandson, Eric Jr.'s excellent grades during his first semester at St. Thomas High School would be worthless, because even with half a scholarship, his parents still couldn't afford the rest of the year's tuition and would put, have to put him in public school. Peggy had promised her daughter that Carl's Santa job should be enough to take care of the rest of the year's tuition. Now Carl felt really bad because now his daughter and grandson were relying on him to keep his job. But this would also affect next Christmas and the vaunted position of Santa at the Manhattan Stacy's near Rockefeller Center. Not to mention riding the sleigh float at the Stacy's Thanksgiving Parade on national television, no less. So from now on, so from now until Christmas, Carl decided that he would not eat anything for 12 hours before he went on duty. And come Monday, he would beg to keep his job if he had to. Monday morning, Carl arrived a little early to try on his second cost Santa costume while the other was being dry cleaned. When he got into the locker room, there was some snickering from the young workers as they left the changing area. They were all young, many of them young enough to be Carl's grandchildren. Taped to his locker door was a somewhat faint photocopy of a handwritten lyric sheet. Obviously, this had been run off so many times that the toner was running low on the copier. And Carl blushed fire engine red when he read the lyrics. Oh, crusty shorts, oh, crusty shorts, your butt cheeks smell like burnt eggs. Your nasty farts make small kids run, their parents turn and lose their lunch. Oh, crusty shorts, oh, crusty shorts, your butt cheeks smell like fruit cake. Then at the bottom was a joke written by another hand. What do Stinky Claws McNally and the Star of Bethlehem have in common? They are both large bodies of boiling gas. Well, Carl rushed the paper into, in his hands, crushed it, and couldn't find a garbage can quick enough. If not for Eric Jr., he would have quit at that moment. But he turned the other cheek and went to work. Saturday and Sunday went well for him, with his fasting plan working out kind of well. Still, he had to deal with the snickers and the occasional reference to stinky claws overheard during his breaks. He also kept a bottle of Beano on him which he took with water at every break. Carrying this, the spying elf would have nothing more to report on Monday if he had anything to do with it. Chapter 4 Carl headed up to Witchgartner's office, but not without his printout of the weekend's Santa ph photography business, or as they call him in the biz, Santa Graphs. Witchgartner hadn't gotten a tan since before sunlight was invented, and that made her scowl all the more frightening. Carl felt uncomfortable, around women like his wife, sweet and gentle, but he, he managed to stay away from the witch gardeners of this world. However, in business, sometimes there's no avoidment. Carl entered his office, his printout in hand, and as much courage as he could summon. He had already decided not to tell her about his irritated bow, because his response would be, why didn't you tell me about this sooner? Because I'd have no Christmas job then, he told himself. <laughs> <coughs> Which Gartner was on the phone when he walked in, and she motioned him to sit down. 
Good morning, Call. What's in your hand? was how she greeted him. Oh, just the total of this week's Santa Graph revenues, Call replied. I saw them already, she said. And they're good, but not as good as most Thanksgiving weekends we've had here. What do you think that is, Call? As she let the question hang in the air, rather than accuse him of anything, she would let him hang himself. He was prepared for a confrontation, but not an inquisition. He stumbled and said, well, the weather was very cold. Maybe people didn't want to bring their children out. No call. They were in the mall. The families were in the store. The word of mouth got to them about you and your disgusting habits. Call was mortified. She was turning the screws now. Call, do you know why I was in the ladies' room on Friday? And the mother was spraying perfume on her little girl's dress, trying to kill the stench after she sat on your lap. The little girl was crying. Smelly, Mommy, smelly. And the mother was furious, telling no one in particular that she was never coming back to the store. Call. Stacy's is having a rough time across the country, but we still have three very successful stores in the chain. Manhattan, Chicago, and here. Do you know the reason why we get to keep sending out our Santas to Manhattan every year? Because it's sort of like a bouquet to us. We're bringing, bringing in so much money to the chain. That's all. They could very easily import the Chicago Santa next year and forget about us entirely. Beyond Santas, do you know how many staff members have here graduate to the Rockefeller Center store? Around 10 to 20 percent a year. Do you think I want to be stuck here, out, out here my whole career? I had to drive just to get a decent cup of coffee. But with your shenanigans, I'll be here the rest of my career. I'm sure by the end of this day, the VP of personnel in the city will be calling me, wondering why I hired such a gross man to be Santa. What should I tell him, Carl? Carl stumbled a bit, but said, "Tell him he was the best man for the job, and if you give him a chance, he can still be the best." Mrs. Weingartner, I have a problem under control. It won't continue, I promise. She still had that glare, but it was softening, just a pinch. Okay, she said. I've written up this form. Consider it as a warning, because quite frankly, right now, you might be the best that's out there. I hate to say that, but you've left us in a bad mess. Tomorrow's December 1st. How many good Sanders are left out there? So read this, sign it, and I don't want to see you back in my office for the rest of the season. Call read it, but had no intentions of signing it. In the past, when he was reprimanded at a job, he would always refuse to sign. And so after reading it, he sat back, not touching the pen. Seeing this, Witch Gartner became very annoyed and said, Look, Carl, yours is not a union job. You have no choice. Either sign the form or go home now. Carl signed it and walked out of the office, dejected, but still with his job. However, the stress of the moment had kicked in to touch it. Hypoglycemia, and he needed some sugar fast before he got sick. He bought a Snickers bar in the employee's lounge because fruit was really out of the question. He swallowed some more beano and went to work. To be continued from the front.